smashed over his event here on yeah. Peter Ortiz. Uh, tell us a little bit about this event. First and foremost, there's the man right there. He's getting on it and he's winning already on the carpet. Um, you know what? I think that I'm happy to be here. I'm happy that I got invited. It's an important event, and to see people who are as strong as the MMA fighters come out and speak against bullying, it says a lot about the problem that we have as people for people to take advantage of other people. So I, I'm here. I'm glad to support that idea that we can bring some, uh, you know, some some courage to some of those who are in more vulnerable positions. I want to get uh, your take. I know you're a big uh, boxing fan, a big yeah. MMA fan. Uh, let's let's start with boxing first. Uh, yeah. Uh, Canelo Smith this weekend. Uh, Triple G. You know, no, first let's talk Triple G, bro. What's up, man? Uh, what up, fellas? Tell us how you're doing. Good. Good. I'm in the good, middle of an interview. Yeah. I'm going to get you on the mic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how was that? We had to let it slip. We had to let it Tell us uh, what you thought about uh, Triple G. I, went, I was in Europe, and I went and hung out with Triple G during the week. He looked great. He ended up, uh, he ended up beating the hell out of Kell Brook, as he should have. He's a bigger man. Um, you know what? I think this fight against Danny Jacobs is going to be interesting. I think that, and Triple G's a friend of mine, but I think that you could craft a game plan on how to fight him based on what Kell Brook showed. Because Kell Brook was effective. He just wasn't big enough to actually impose his will. Um, I mean, the fight everybody wants to see is Triple G and Canelo. Unfortunately, with the politics of boxing, who knows when it's going to happen? I hope it happens. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pumped up about that. When it comes to Canelo Smith, I mean, I think that fight should kind of go the way of, uh, of Golovkin Brook. Um, it's interesting to see if, the, if Canelo can develop because he's obviously strong as an ox and he's a great champion. But I'd like to see more lateral movement from him, and I wonder if he's going to show that or if he's going to just stick with his normal game plan, which is just to pound people into submission, which works. So, I mean, you can't really knock it. Do you think that Golovkin was exposed a little bit in the Brook fight? Some people are saying that Brook exposed some flaws, or do you think that Brook is just a superior boxer at a lighter weight, or Golovkin is starting to show some signs of deterioration as he gets older? That's a great question. I personally think that... Golovkin is probably number one pound for pound in the world right now. So I don't think that he was exposed. I think that he may have had an off night, and I think that he got hit. Well, I think a lot of guys are going to come up with some false courage that's going to end up getting a lot of dudes hurt because they're not going to be scared to take this fight because they saw Kell Brook able to make some moves. But what Gennady did show you is he's got a hell of a chin because he took a lot of bombs that night, and he was still able to impose his will, and he still got that thunder in his left and his right, which you just can never discount. When a guy can change the fight with one punch, he's always a viable champion. You know, he's always, he's always an option. But I think that he looked hittable and he looked human. For the most part, people were scared of Triple G for the past, like, five years. He can't even get a fight. The guy can't get that fight. That fight was on HBO. It wasn't even on pay-per-view. And now you're talking about Canelo's about to fight on pay-per-view. I don't know how that's going to go because I don't think anybody really cares about Smith, you know? And, and a lot of people, from what I understand, a lot of people, what's up, baby? A lot of people in the Latino community are kind of backlashing against Canelo because he called out Triple G in the ring and didn't, didn't make the fight next. I don't know if that's his fault or if that's on Golden Boy, but it's going to be interesting to see what happens from this point. Do you think that they actually will fight each other? I mean, obviously... Eventually, and you know what? And I hope it's not a, a Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mayweather situation. I hope they actually fight each other when they're both in their primes, when people want it. A terrible thing has happened in boxing where people are... Networks, I think, are to blame for it. I think uh, I think Floyd is to blame for it, but he wouldn't really care because he's laughing all the way to the tune of a billion dollars. Right. But this zero loss record thing means way too much in boxing now. The old adage in boxing used to be the only reason you got that zero is you haven't fought the right guy yet. And the thing is, there's somebody somewhere in the whole world who brings out the greatest in every boxer. And you got to find that guy. And that may result in you losing. But it doesn't mean it's, it's like life. You losing isn't the end of it. It's about coming back. And so, you know, you look at look at the greatest fighters of all time. You look at Sugar Ray Robinson. Look at, look at Muhammad Ali. Look at Joe Lewis. These guys lost. And they came back. And this is why the public loves them. This is why they were revered beyond the grave. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. I hope they make that fight eventually. But until then, I tell you, the fight that's number one on my radar is that Kovalev Ward fight. I was just going to ask you about that. Looking down the line a little bit, how are you seeing that fight play out? Is it going to Vegas? Are you going to be ringside for that fight? I'm going to be at that fight for sure, and God willing, unless something happens, you know. But, um, hey, 
I'm with my man, son of God. I'm going to ride with Andre Ward on that. I think he's going to find a way. Andre Ward is a guy who hasn't had enough opportunity, in my opinion, to show his greatness because of all of the problems with contracts and in and out of the ring and blah, blah, blah. But I believe he's great. I like how his, I like how his uh, management team actually allowed him to continue to fight and not necessarily, you know, he, he was still fighting. It wasn't champion caliber guys per se, but he was fighting and he was getting his game back together, knocking the ring rust off. And I hope he's ready for the crusher because that dude is serious. Kovalev is real. He can end the fight with one punch. You, you said earlier that you think Triple G is the best pound for pound. Yeah. A lot of people would argue the Ward is. I, and I'm right there with him. The only thing I say is that because uh, uh, Son of God hasn't had enough fights over the past few years, it's the only reason that I won't put him at number one. I put him at number two, number three. Top five for sure, but he just needs more fights. Everybody knows he has it. That's the part about it, and that's why everybody puts him at the top of the list. I mean, there's only three dudes that Jordan has ever signed. Think about that. Three boxers Jordan signed. Triple G, uh-oh, uh Triple G, uh, Andre Ward, and Roy Jones. They got their finger on the pulse of champions. I'll see you guys later.